Welcome everybody to another episode of Cold Emails Hot Takes. Cody, it's great to have you on the podcast. Awesome. No, thanks for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, for the viewers listening, Cody is the CMO and co-founder of in-house outbound systems.io. I've seen him on Twitter post some insane results that he's been getting with his cold email campaigns. So I had to get him on the podcast to learn more. And I have to say, just reading some of your tweets uh, gets me hyped up. And uh, uh, Cody, can you tell the viewers listening a little bit more about what you do? Yeah, yeah, of course. Knows. Um, so basically what we do at in-house app on systems is we set up in-house cold email infrastructure for companies who, you know, if they already have like the foundations of you know, a good cold email campaign, which is, you know, they have a good offer they have social proof, they have some sort of product market fit. And then most of the time they already have like a video sales letter and then a solid landing page and some sort of decent online presence. We essentially set up the cold email infrastructure, personalize each cold email. So like the offer is basically like, we'll, we'll give you the vehicle and set up the system so you can send 20,000 personalized cold emails every single month to your idle clients. And then also that's, that's kind of like my end. What my partner does as well is like, that's the top of the funnel, which is the cold emails. And then the middle of the funnel would essentially be like the sales process, the automations, um, which I get into a little bit later, but that's kind of like what we do at in-house up on systems. Um, me and my partner build the in-house cold email infrastructure and then also CRM automations to automate a high percentage of the sales process as well. Okay, gotcha. So you, you alluded, alluded to it a little bit, but what are some components to this in-house up on systems? What are the, the pieces that go into it? Yeah. So basically like it's, it's a variety of different moving pieces, but generally speaking, like it's quite literally just like, you know, a healthy number of secondary domains, usually connecting one to two inboxes per domain, whether that is, you know, Google inboxes, Outlook inboxes slash Microsoft inboxes or Zoho inboxes as well. And then scraping list of leads, um, you know, scraping list leads, whether that is Apollo um, Crunchbase, Find Email, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, depending on like what the targeting is, whether it's B2B or B2C. And then also verifying the list of leads, cleaning the list of leads, um, you know, verifying with Neverbalance, cleaning with Scrubby.io. And then that's the domain side, the lead side, and then scripts as well, using script frameworks um, that are kind of like proven and tested and like plugging and playing like their specific offer, their specific like target market like pain points, their goals, their desires, and like plugging that into this system. And then also leveraging personalization at scale um, in terms of, you know, leveraging either AI or VAs to research specific touch points. That's kind of like the cold email aspect. And then also when it comes to like this entire system, like I said, Luke is, Luke is very, very good. That's my partner, very, very good at like the CRM side. So not only do we set up the kind of like the initial cold email automations and then the follow-up automations on that, we also set it up so like as soon as a prospect does respond, they're either, you know, inbox management automations, follow-up automations, pre-call drip sequences to warm up the prospect before they even hop on the call, and then also post-call nurture sequences after the call, and then, you know, no-show automations, client onboarding automations, like this entire system and funnel, like it basically, it sets up like their marketing, it can essentially like re replace like a CMO or like some sort of marketing director or some sort of sales rep on the, on the marketing side. But also like the sales side as well, like it, you know, covers a high percentage of like all the, the sales processes as well. So that's kind of like what it looks like on like how, how exactly we work um, in terms of like the marketing and then the sales. And we kind of just like combine both of our offers um, into one and just doing that for the done for you right now. Okay, awesome, man. That sounds like a, a really good offer, like really covering all the bases, not just bringing in the interested lead, but also everything that happens after that. And exactly. Um, you mentioned personalizing a cold email at scale. When you're sending high volume, how do you still manage to personalize without spending a lot of energy or resource, resources into that? Yeah. So there, there's a couple of different tricks um, that I found out. I probably can't go into every single one right now, but if you're targeting like, let's say, for example, most people like they just scrape like 10,000 leads and then they just like put it all in one campaign. I like to do if it's like 10,000 people, like five different campaigns, more or less, like one campaign, very, very targeted towards if it's like CMO versus founder, and then like use their specific pain points, use their specific goals and like tailor that, like tailor that copy specifically towards them. And then obviously the founder as well. If it's D to C, I always get VAs to manually research specific things. 
So for example, if you're targeting e-commerce, you need to get very, very specific in the targeting. Like you can't just target all e-commerce. I think we both, everybody knows this. Like you can't just target like all e-commerce brands. You need to target like looking for beauty brands that are running ads that are at this amount of employees and then like the CMO, right? What I do is like, if it's like some sort of like ad creative offer or like, like you're offering ad creatives or like you're offering TikTok ads, Facebook ads, something like that, I get VAs to manually go through and see their Facebook ad library and put inside the Google sheet, like number one, like put the word, put the number one, if they're running video ads, put the number two, if they're running like still ads, like, you know, regular ads or number three, if they're not running ads at all, or number four, if they're running like UGC and then like, like filter them specifically and like export them and put them inside of instantly. So like this campaign is only going to guys who are running UGC ads. This campaign is only going to guys to e-commerce brands that are running um, video ads or still ads and basically like tailor the copy towards them specifically like, hey, saw that you're running UGC ads on Facebook and then go into the actual pitch. That's one way as well, like to get very, very, very niche down and personalized. I also like to use AI. It's like quick lines or line.ai. And it basically like you just, I'm, I'm sure you know about this. You basically just put in like first name, last name, job title, company, name, the website, and then the LinkedIn as well. It's gonna essentially like do that research aspect for you. Look on their LinkedIn, their articles, their website, any sort of podcast and bring out a research first line. From there, sometimes as you know, like AI is a little bit kind of like robotic-y. So I get VAs to go through that manually as well. And basically like, if it sounds robotic, like I need you to say it out loud. So it sounds very, very natural. And either using that research first line which most of the time it's actually pretty good. Like it's not bad at all. It shows, it shows the prospect that you did research touch points, which is like the main thing that they want to know. You either use that as the first line or the PS or the second email as well. So I've, I've done a, little, a bunch of AB testing and kind of depends on the target market and you can run that test as well. But that's kind of like how I personalize that skill. If it's D to C also using like the product names. So just like adding that extra bit of personalization, like by the way, love your product name seeing if they're running ads or like any sort of like research touch points that a virtual assistant can do. Like you got to get super, I always get like super creative, like a couple coffees, maybe a cigarette or two, like get super in that creative flow state. And then also like see like what exactly I can like extract from virtual assistants on my team, virtual assistants, like go through, find this touch point. And then instead of like writing a personalized first line for each one, which takes like, dude, like I, like last year I was doing this. I'm pretty sure everybody was, they were paying like $1 a first line. I just pay, you know, it's super cheap to like, not like write a personalized first line, but like just to like find something like a key factor and like what exactly differentiates them and like say that inside the actual cold email. Um, and that's super, super easy to do at scale. Okay, awesome. And there's are some really, really good pointers that, that people can implement. Yeah. And the next question would be, um, I've heard you talk about using different email providers at the same time, right? Usually people only use G Suite. They ask, hey, should I use G Suite? Should I use Outlook? Should I use Zoho? I've seen you talk about using different pro email providers at, at the same time. Can, what is that about? How did you come up with the idea? Yeah, so I actually, so Nick Abraham talks about this a lot and he's kind of, I would say he's like, he's like a mentor to me. Like he's very, very smart with Cody. He's been in the game for a long time. Um, he's an awesome dude yeah. as well. Yeah, he basically Shout out talks to, about like to Nick, one of the smartest dudes in the cold email game. I learned a lot from him as well. Yeah, <laughs> shout out Nick, he's a homie. Um, basically, so like instead of doing like he basically says, so like buy the domains and then set up so like Outlook, Zoho, and then G Suite as well. And the base actually, I saw this in instantly earlier today. You guys added this like MX matching, which is super sick. I didn't know that until today. I'm not sure like when you guys added that. But Just added it today. <laughs> oh sick okay cool yeah. yeah basically like it's it helps deliverability for all the viewers basically it helps deliverability so like they can see and i'm sure like there's a system on the back end of instantly where like as soon as you put in the list of leads you can essentially see like or actually the software instantly can see if you know the prospect's email address is either zoho outlook or gmail and it connects your gmail with their gmail your outlook with their outlook your zoho with their zoho and that kind of like stops the bounces it increases deliverability tenfold um, in terms of like an you know, open rates are obviously going to increase, the reply rates are going to increase as well. Not a lot of people do this. Most people just set up like, you know, G Suites. And then if the prospect's email address is, you know, something other than G Suite, sometimes the deliverability lowers, but this is a very, very good way to like ensure. I mean, there's so many different factors in terms of like going straight to the inbox, but this is another like very, very 
it, it was kind of esoteric, but now, now it's a little bit more known, but like, it's very, very, it's a very, very good way to like increase the livability, ensure you're seeing like 95 to 97% livability rate. I think everything else is in place in terms of livability. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're going to start recommending that also more and more to use a variety of different uh, sending providers or email providers, um, not just not just having one. Um, great. Yeah, so um, I was looking at your Twitter earlier and I saw a couple of days ago you mentioned uh, a Loom personalized video strategy for positive replies. Uh, can you tell me more about that that one? And, and you mentioned also something about embedding the Calendly CTA in the Loom. Uh, yeah. how, does, how does that look if, if, if you're down to share it? Yeah, and I can share some sauce. So basically, as soon as as soon as a prospect, so this was like this was like ten days ago, the fr that Friday and Saturday we got like eight or ten leads from cold email that like either wanted the video or wanted more information. I kind of like I was you know it, I think this was a Saturday when I posted that I was basically you know ripping a ton of Loom videos, like five hundred Loom videos that like going over the entire process. They're all manual as well. I'm sure there's a way to automate it. Like the first half is personalized and like the second half is automated but i set it up so like as soon as you know they responded to the cold email i put in the loom video record a quick loom video have my face um, my voice as well going over my process because most people just do written text right prospect says you know can i have more information they, they write it out some sort of copy and paste template i like to get a lot more personal and i like my clients to do that as well basically you know have you have your voice out there your face the thumbnail is your face like on their website to show that you know you actually took the time um, to you know record a quick video, tell them about yourself, how exactly you can help them, your offer, your social proof, and then obviously a call to action as well. So that's kind of like what I do in terms of the process. I always do like like top right, like at the end of the video, I'm always like click right here if you want to build, if you wanted to hop on a call or, or learn learn more. And it's basically just like the embedded link of my calendar, and then that's kind of like so record the video, send it in the email, embed the call to action, and then also. We have automations where we essentially like as soon as a prospect does respond, excuse me, and then they're put in the interested um, category inside of our CRM, it automates a LinkedIn connection request. So not only did we send them the cold email, did they respond with positive of interest, we recorded the Loom video, embedded our, our calendar link, and then we automated a LinkedIn connection request. Now for LinkedIn's, like I always recommend a very, very optimized profile. So, you know, good headline, a lot of recommendations, a lot of endorsements. And then like your featured section needs to be filled with social proof, filled with value um, and filled with things that, you know, your prospects or you, like other, like your competitors are charging for, right? And I give them so much value. They think to themselves like, wow, this guy knows exactly what he's doing. He's solving my problems for free. I cannot imagine if I actually paid for him or if I actually paid him and worked with him. So like, there's so many like moving pieces. And like with my LinkedIn, like I always try to post every single day, like super valuable content. So not only are they getting the cold email, like they see that, you know, I, I post a lot of content, post a lot of valuable content on LinkedIn, but I'm not sending, sending them a Loom video with a call to action on the calendar link. And then like kind of like warming them up. So once they do hop on a call, they're a lot more inclined to like trust me. And then they're a lot more inclined to actually like hop on the call as well with like this many like foundations. And then also the video sales over on the landing page helps a ton. Yeah, people underestimate uh, how many people that before they reply to a cold email, they're going to check out your social presence, yeah. your LinkedIn, they're going to check out your website, look at your VSL, and that can really help boost your reply rates. Or even, even after they replied, said, yeah. said, sure, I'm interested to hear more, or sure, I'm, I'm open to get on a call, they're going to check you out. So make sure, uh, you know, your social presence and, your, and the website and everything is on point. It really helps with the actual performance of the cold email campaign. Yeah. Well. No, it, it is, that's like, that, I think that's like one of the most important factors of the cold email campaign. Like usually me and Luke for our done for you offer, like we only take on people who already have a good offer. They already have good social proof and then they already have some sort of product market fit. And then if they don't have, you know, those things, those key, those key factors that we just said in those in terms of like a video sales letter, they actually have a decent landing page, decent VSL, decent LinkedIn as well. Like we kind of, we kind of add that on as a bonus because we're obviously going to see a lot better results if they already have some sort of social presence. Cause like you said, as soon as someone gets a cold email, like they don't know who you are. So I think the best thing to do is just like build content outside of cold email, which is inevitably going to help cold email see the better results. Um, not a lot of people talk about that, but that is such an important factor. No, no, definitely. And 
at the beginning of the conversation, you talked a little bit about copy frameworks as well, right? You, in this in-house outbound system, you help people create their first copy or come up with their first copy with their messaging. What's your creative process like? You mentioned the smashing some coffees, some nicotine as well. What's your creative process like to, to write some really yeah. good, compelling cold emails? Yeah, so I really like, if you know Christian from Knowledge X, um, he's a homie as well. He helps a lot with oh, yeah. copy. Um, yes. I learn a lot from him. He's he's very, very awesome at writing cold email copy. Um, but yeah, basically use the same, like very, very similar frameworks and then add a little bit of sauce as well. But yeah, in terms of the creative creative process, like I said, a couple of coffees, a couple of cigarettes, um, and then some sort of like deep flow music as well. Um, and then in terms of the frameworks, just literally leveraging already existing social proof that you have and then low friction call to actions, leveraging sales assets as well leveraging personalization at scale like there's so many things that there's so many a b tests like there really is like so many different a b tests that you could you know leverage and then also um if you're sending like if you're sending like 10 20 30 000 cold emails a month like there's so many different tests that you could create um same thing with like ad creatives and landing pages it's like you don't know what works until you actually try it so just testing so many um different you know different initial cold emails follow-ups angles messages sequences offers as well and then like seeing what works turning off what doesn't work and then optimizing and scaling up with the ones that don't work but usually if you're sending that many cold emails and you're testing a variety of different a b a b testing um you're definitely going to find a winner if you have like all those foundations and you're sending that many cold emails okay great you, you mentioned uh, going heavy on on social proof and you mean like uh adding case studies like specific stories of other uh customers that your clients helped or like is that case studies or how do you mean social proof yeah so in terms of social proof like there's so many different ways to leverage social proof so i like to use like if we're targeting like i, I only target companies most of the time i only target like niches that my clients have case studies in and have solid case studies in so we're using those case studies inside of the actual cold email whether that is like a recent win or one sentence case study and then also using that case studies inside of the, on the landing page, whether that's, you know, I always recommend to get video testimonials, video interviews, before and after screenshots, um, case studies, like a quantifiable result in a quantifiable time frame, And then also in the DSL as well. So going over your process and then at the end or in the beginning, depending on like what exactly they want to do, put that case study, like talk about it, like absolutely like exert that. Bit, those bits of social proof into the ether into the world like make sure that you're actually like telling people about that because if you have some people are super shy about this it's like why would you be shy like you're literally showing a company that you've helped a company very very similar to them so like don't be shy about that at all uh, make sure that they know that you know you've had you have social proof helping a company very very similar to them you could help them so put it in your cool email your video sales letter your landing page and then your linkedin featured section as well which not a lot of people do but i think that's so important Okay, great. Yeah, definitely. Like it's one thing to get people results, but then you also have to capture the testimonials from that results, not being shy and then like really presenting that to the world, yeah. shouting it from the rooftops. Yeah, exactly. Great. Uh, Cody, quick intermission. Uh, you, you cool if we switch to a couple a cold email rapid fire questions? Sure. Let's do it. Just a couple of quick ones. Right, let's do it. Uh, what are your favorite B2B data sources? B2B. I like, I usually use findemail.com, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, Apollo, Uplead, Leadshark, um, that, and then Crunchbase as well sometimes. But those are kind of like the B2B databases that I use. Okay, gotcha. Uh, what are you, some of your favorite subject lines? Favorite subject lines. I mean, quick question never fails. <laughs> quick right, quick question, right. question for company, company name, something. Keep it super simple. Okay, gotcha. Fair enough. Uh, what's your favorite call to action in a cold email? Favorite call to action. In terms of the style, like low friction call to actions, like making it super easy to say yes to. It's so like, mind if I share more info? Mind if I share a quick video explaining X, Y, Z? Um, usually like low friction call to actions like that tend to work pretty well. Okay, got it. What's your favorite follow-up messaging? Follow-up. I would say... I'm actually going to start testing it. So like the follow-ups, like initial cold email, we land in the inbox and then leveraging either like GIFs, like Hyperrise or pitch lane as well. Because after we land in the inbox, like you definitely, we can definitely test GIFs, 
and videos, maybe not like sending thousands and thousands a day, but like as follow-ups as well. I'm going to test that. I'll start testing that and I'll let you know the results, but just leveraging the fact that, you know, sales assets as follow-ups or some sort of video or GIF. Um, usually I kind of like those as well. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. GIFs actually we're testing that and GIFs and in, in the follow-ups and step two or step three of the sequence work well, sometimes like just putting a funny twist on it even depends on, on your target audience, obviously, but like GIFs yeah. and media and images uh, can work uh, definitely in follow-ups. Um, Awesome, man. Cody, like you really know your stuff. I can uh, I can see it from like how granular you're able to go into these topics. Uh, you deliver, delivered like a lot of value in terms of like cold email strategies and tactics. Uh, before we wrap it up as a last question, I would love to learn more about uh, your mindset. Uh, you know, I see you uh, on Twitter or just in general. I just see you taking massive action. Um, you're running your own campaigns. You're running your clients' campaigns. You're building in-house outbound systems. You're growing a personal brand. You do a lot of stuff. Um, is there any advice you would give to people to become uh, action takers as well? What's what's your mindset around that? Getting stuff done, taking action fast. That's a good question. I would say I kind of like adopt this mentality from a couple guys. One being, if you know on Twitter, Hassan, basically Mr. Overpaid. Um, his, his ad is Mr. Overpaid always. And then Tate as well. Andrew Tate always talking about just like attacking life at full speed. Like literally, what do you have to lose? Like you're just young. Like you literally, like there's nothing to lose and everything to gain. So I'm always like going into the day, basically like, you know, what do I have to lose if I just like attack at full force? Like I want, I want to get to a very, very high level at a young age. So it's like, th these are kind of like the steps I need to take in terms of like, you know, business, inputs every single day, fitness inputs every single day, et cetera. And just like getting to a high level at a very, very young age. Cause if you're like 40 or 50 and you're rich, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, I wouldn't say it's normal, but like, it's definitely not as normal as like, you know, being in your mid twenties, like super at a, at a very good financial level. And then like, you know, in good shape as well. And like all these different moving pieces. So I think that's like one of the things that motivates me the most, just like that mindset of just like always attacking at full speed, um, always having goals. Because if you're if you're a man, like literally just treat life like a GTA. Even if you're a woman as well, like you can literally con you can literally achieve so much if you put your mind to something. So just like conquer like whatever your goals are, um, and just like enjoy the journey as well. Like I I, I do sometimes I kind of like forget that, but it's like like the actual process of like attacking at full speed, like going going going. Um, I love doing it, but sometimes I forget that, you know, this is actually like a process that I need to enjoy. Um, yeah, I usually say that's like the main thing, um, especially like if, you know, if you're young or even old, like just like going at full force towards life, like your goals, like you're literally not going to regret it one second. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and there's so much opportunity out there. It's, it's like, it's so exciting. There's, we, we live in amazing times. There's like so much going on. There's so much opportunity. If you like just charge forward, if you always push forward. You don't get complacent. Even if you've achieved a little bit of success, it's just that intellectual stimulation of, of tackling more challenges. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm with you on that. That's uh, yeah. inspiring. Yeah, like we have, we have such like, think, think about it now. Like everybody here is like, if you're living in like, you know, 2023, like having access to the internet, especially like money, Twitter, or like agency space, online money, like even the, like 10 years ago, like nothing was around like this. Like it is so, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's like, it's literally a hundred times easier than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, a hundred years ago. Like there's so much opportunity and people just like, they kind of like waste their potential, right? Like you literally have such an opportunity to be financially free, have some sort of freedom. Most people kind of take that for granted and still like are super lazy, but it's like, you gotta, you gotta realize like that perspective. It's like, you literally have such an opportunity. Like you were like one of the luckiest people. Um, if you're on this space, if you're in this space at this even it like doesn't even matter what age you are. Like you literally have the opportunity to like make five figures a month just from your laptop and talking with people. Um, you don't have to work in some sort of factory, some sort of underground tunnel. You don't have to go into wars, which is like you know people. How many, however many years ago they were doing that at this age um, or any age. So it's like you gotta kind of like look at it from a thirty thousand foot perspective and realize like you're so lucky. Like you need to you know fulfill your full potential and then also make sure that you know if you know like your ancestors are watching, like you gotta make them proud as well. Yeah, yeah, really well said. Especially also like this is an example, right? This YouTube podcast, it's it's just going to be for free, right? And you drop some strategies, some tactics. People can use that right away. It's there. People just have to, you know, get excited and, and take action. And um, exactly. Yeah. 
Awesome, Cody. It was it was great to have you on the show. Also learning from you. You dropped a lot of value. And uh, for people who want to learn more from you or work with you, where should they go? Yeah, so my Twitter is the Cody Carnes. Um, website is inhousealponsystems.io, and then also my YouTube channel. I think you can probably just type in Cody Carnes. Um, there is actually a Christian singer named Cody Carnes, which is actually so annoying. But you could probably just type in like Co- Cody Carnes cold email. Um, just started that a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yeah, that's where you can find me on Twitter. Uh, and then LinkedIn, Cody Carnes as well. Okay, great. Yeah, and for everybody listening, I'll put these links in the description as well. The Twitter, the YouTube, in-house app on systems.io and uh, your LinkedIn, they'll be in the description as well. Awesome. Yeah, well, thank okay. you for having me, Nils. Yeah, it was, was great to chat, uh, Cody. And uh, thanks again for your time. And uh, I will talk to you soon. All right, thank you. See you. Cheers.